Hi everyone, Jerry Regan here. I'm the head of the team at the New Wild Geese. We're having a, a, it seems like a marathon of discussions here on our inaugural launch day, focusing on the, the varied and many aspects of the epic Irish experience around the world. In this instance, with this panel here, we're, we're gifted with two great uh, individuals, very knowledgeable about the subject at hand, which is the Irish experience in the American Civil War. And I call it, in short, the blue, the gray, and the green. We, we have with us uh, Damien Shields, who, an archaeologist based in County Cork, who has a new book, which I'm sure we'll hear more about, about the very topic of this discussion, this panel. And with Damien, although before he disappeared, I don't know, he might have a creditor hot in his heels, would be uh, Robbie Doyle. Hopefully, Robbie will come back. In fact, I'll try to facilitate that by making sure I leave a breadcrumb trail for Robbie to follow. Hold on one second. Uh, I'm looking for, there we go. Okay. All right. So, Damien, while, while we have you here, and blessedly so, t tell us about your, your, new, your new book. That's particularly interesting to us. Uh, well, it's, um, it's called the uh, imaginative title, Jerry, The Irish and the American Civil War. <laughs> so, but it's, um, yeah, it's based on the fruits of a website I've been running for the last uh, three years or so, um, the Irish American Civil War website, that um, I set up, more or less, I have to say, t to look at the Irish, uh, t to help people in Ireland um, look at the Irish and the American Civil War, because I think you do great work in the States to remember the Irish who, who, who participated in the Civil War, but it's, it's not it's not really got the place that it deserves in Irish memory at all in Ireland. Um, it's like it's the it's the second biggest conflict that the Irish ever fought in in terms of numbers. World War One is the only one that compares with it, um, and it's so important. That was kind of my modus operandi for setting up that site, um, and the book then um, grew out of that. So it's effectively it's not it's not a chronological history of the Irish in the war or anything like that. What it is is um, it's a collection of personal stories, really. Of different people to give a flavour uh, for people in Ireland as to what what it was like for those Irish who were caught up in the war. Damon, how how many individuals do you profile in the book? If you have a number, uh, approximately. That, that's <laughs> that's a good question, actually. Um, it it kind of takes different flavours. There's there's probably um, uh, there's probably a couple of dozen of them anyway that I would look at in a bit of detail. Um, so so some of it I look at more generally, like so I have. Um, I have split it up into different sections called Beginnings, um, Realities, The Wider War and Aftermath. And so uh, there's only one section that actually looks at the, the physical battlefields, if you like, guys fighting on the battlefields. So I have some um, earlier ones. So, we, example, um, James Shields, a Tyrone man um, who almost fought um, Abraham Lincoln in a duel in, in Illinois. is one, He's one of the guys in 1842. So kind of start with this pre-war stuff. Um, looking at the Irish in Fort Sumter, um, the the only the only Marine killed, for example, during the the John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry was an Irishman. So looking at the Irish connections in the pre-war army, and then looking um, at how, say, Marr recruited for the Irish Brigade in New York, what type of things he said to people to get them to enlist. Uh, then looking at look at looking at the battlefield, but then looking at the consequences. What happens? What, what happens to the, those at home? That the wives and the children of men who were killed at the front, what's their lot like for the next 30, 40, 50 years? What, what happened to the guys who were, who were injured? One of the men I have in the book um, was, was, um, was shot in the head in 1865. He made it all the way through um, the war. He, he, he was shot in the head at Bentonville, an Irish man. He was in his early 20s. And then I trace him through the national soldiers' homes um, for the next 50 years. This man's life is 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 affected by it. So I, I do a lot of that as well. And then look at the war in Ireland. Like there was a Confederate agents were sent to Ireland to to try and prevent recruitment into the Union armies. Yeah, I, uh, I think that I recall because it's a, it's an it's an interest of mine, not as intense as it is for you. But I remember Lieutenant Capstan 
right? Is that that's right? That's right. He was the first. He was, was the first to be sent to Trinity College Dublin, as I recall reading. Yeah, uh, there the was him, um, and then they, they sent um, another the, the 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 Confederacy's fighting chaplain, um, um, uh, Father John Bannon, as well. He was sent over, and and Jefferson Davis was actually reading his reports from Ireland to, to get a to get an indication of how successful uh, he he was he, he was doing. Um, so yeah, there's 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 those guys who are who who are here attempting to stop what they perceived as a flood of of Irish into the armies of the, the north. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting sidelight to the to the main theater of the war. Uh, Robbie, w welcome back in. I I I, I, I gather uh, a, a bill collector came to the door and you felt it was convenient to disappear or something. <laughs> I actually had to go to a neighbor's house to get an internet connection for some reason. Murphy's Law. Uh, aptly named, my, my internet crashed about five minutes ago, so yes, I'm back and available. Yeah, well, welcome. Now, now, I'm happy to tell anyone within earshot, Robbie's got a particularly fasc a fascinating focus, and, that, and, and it's rather keenly drawn on, on one individual from personality from the war, uh, named Miles Keough. And uh, Robbie, why don't you just highlight for us uh, Miles, Miles Keough's life and, and career? In the United States, and actually, in in the in the state, set the stage for that career, if you will. Well, well Miles Kill is probably best known um, as someone who died with Custer, General Custer, at Custer's Last Hand in 1876. It's probably one of the most iconic battles to take place in American soil after Gettysburg. But um, having done a little bit of research, I mean, his Civil War record is on a par with many of the Irish who actually fought. Um, during 1851 and 1865. Um, Kyo was actually part of the army fight in Italy and um, he was actually recruited by emissaries from uh, America. Uh, Cardinal Hughes in particular came over to Rome and was looking for experienced officers who would have fought in Europe and Kyo was one of those who was picked up by Cardinal Hughes and he arrived in 1862 and he ended and up... Let me interject. He, re he arrived from... Is it Carlo? Is that his... Well, he's originally, yeah, he's originally from County Carlow, Lock and Bridge in County Carlow, and he left Lock and Bridge in 1860 to go with about a thousand other Irishmen to fight for the Pope and um, to protect the Papal States. And as it, as it was at the time, we think of the Papal States now as really just the second, probably the smallest state in the world. But at the time, in 1860, it was like a, a wide belt across the leg of or the boot of Italy. And um, there was a, a, a multinational Catholic army that was raised by the Pope to fight to protect these states that he had, and Kyo was one of those thousand or so Irish that went over, but the war was a failure and the Catholics were defeated and the Italians took over much of the, the, the papal states. But once um, Kyo remained in Rome, sort of, it was more about parades and pageantry rather than fighting, and he probably would have got bored along with many of the other officers um, in his army. Um, now Cardinal Hughes, sent over by Lincoln's government, tried to recruit many officers, and Kyo was one of those that was picked up. So the first um, general that he actually served was Irish-born General Shields, that I know you know, spoken about in his book, who was involved, and I'm sure he'll talk about in a second, a, a notorious um, duel with Abraham Lincoln. But uh, Kyo fought under the command of General Shields, and the um, first um, conflict was sort of a baptism of fire, where he, he nearly ended up capturing the famous Stonewall Jackson um, at the Battle of Port Republic. Uh, yeah. Kyo went on to, sorry, Jeremy, was it? And, and Kyo served in that in that battle. Like, yeah, well, he was a company commander. I'm going to guess at that juncture. Or? He was actually. Uh, Kyo was most associated with cavalry, but he was actually an infantry commander. But at the time, Shields put him in charge of the 120 cavalry that he had. It was the first time Kyo had command of cavalry. Did very well. There's this crucial. We're not going into too much detail. There was this crucial bridge at Port Republic that Kyo had to defend, and. Um, there were recounts in the New York Times from the, from that period that this Captain Kyo tried to hold the bridge as long as he could, and eventually it was set fire and it was burnt. But the, the main thing is, uh, his very very first conflict, he actually he, he performed very very well with a number of, of the other. Um, there was a Captain Dan Kiley, who also was a ex papal guard fighting at the Battle of Port Republic, um, and the two of them performed very very well. Um, Kyo went on to to. To have a, a career within the Union Army. Yeah, and and by the way, oh, I 
Rob, Rob disappeared again. All right. Uh, but I just was going to add, it, Rob's words actually speak volumes on the new wild geese because he is kind enough to grace us with a a uh, series of articles uh, on about Miles Keough's career before the American Civil War. Our, our colleague, sadly dis deceased now, gone for almost eight years, Brian Pahanka wrote has written a three-part series for us about Miles Keough, focusing on his on his war years. Uh, anyway, Rob, welcome back. But tell t tell us, uh, you guys, about the Irish American Civil War trail, which which is clearly something that's, in our view, my view, long past due. And you're clearly making significant progress in in making that a reality. T tell us uh, a bit about that project, you guys. Would you? Let Let Damien talk about this one, actually. Uh, yeah, no bother. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it it effectively came about um, because there's a there's a group of us, um, myself, uh, Robert, um, James Doherty, and Ian Ian Keneally, who've all be, got an interest in um, in the American Civil War. And again, as I was mentioning earlier, trying to to raise its profile in Ireland to to get the the, the, the kind of the place in our memory here that it deserves. And so we've been um, looking at the different sites around Ireland that have connections with the American Civil War. So either lo locations that are connected with, with famous individuals like, say, Patrick Claiborne's um, birthplace where he lived, his father and mo mother are buried here, sites located uh, associated yeah, and with... Yeah, by the, by, the, by the way, that would be, that would be Ovens Township County Court. That's absolutely look, right. Yeah, only a few well, miles away from me here. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, one one of the, one of the raison d'etre for the new wild geese, as it has been for the wild geese for fifteen plus years, is to facilitate connections be between the diaspora and mother mother Ireland. So we, we're very excited to draw that draw them out. So yeah, Patrick Claiborne is of. His father was, I recall, was a physician in ovens, and in fact, his his ancestral home, or maybe, I think it was his childhood home, is still there and very well maintained. I don't believe it, it's it is family. indeed Bright Park Cottage. Yeah, it is. It's in very good condition. But both houses that he lived in growing up, the one he was born in, and the house that they moved to, which is only a, a few hundred meters down the road, are both in 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 very good condition to this day. Unfortunately, the the the, the church where he was baptized and where his father buried less so. It's it's now derelict. But um, it, yeah, it, the, these these are these are kind of. Great places to see. Robert has just put up actually the the website that that we developed for for the trail. Um, it's at www.irishacwtrail.com where we by county started to list these different locations. Um, and aside from the individuals, I, I should say Jerry, as well that, that there's 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 other connections that are a bit bit more unusual. There's a, a factory in Limerick, for example, Tate's Factory, which is still standing. Where they actually made Confederate uniforms in 1864 and shipped them from Limerick through the Union blockade to the south, and they were worn by 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 troops in Petersburg, by Confederate troops in Petersburg and in other areas around the south towards the end of the war. Uh, so there's these type of there's areas where Ballincolly gunpowder mills, where, where Claiborne's father uh, worked for a time, um, that they um, shipped powder over to to to, to the United States dur during the Civil War. So there's there's these other connections that that. We have the, the great individual connections, and we have these other, if you like, industrial connections too. Well, and and I would interject as as well, Damien, that one of the, one of the ties that bind us all here at at the Wild Geese and 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 the new Wild Geese going forward is a desire to both explore and preserve, as well as celebrate the history of the Irish around the world. And it seems evident to me that as you all are successful in highlighting the living connections between the Irish in the American Civil War and Ireland that that in effect will further the cause of preservation so as people in Ireland learn that these sadly this sad, sadly there are these buildings that are in disrepair like Tate's Tate's uniform factory mm -hmm. and and Claiborne's baptismal church as they draw visitors from abroad, I, I, it seems like the task of, of all of us who care about preserving this history will be greatly 
aided by 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 your efforts, as 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 modest as they might seem in the early stages. Well, absolutely. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of sites around Ireland that are connected to to the American Civil War. And you're not just talking about birthplaces. I mean, you have the birthplace of Thomas Francis Marr, and you have the birthplace, alleged birthplace of Sheridan. But there's also other connections that that we have around Ireland. And really, when when you see, I mean, there are a couple of states in America, like Virginia and, and etc., that would have a huge connection with the American Civil War. But I mean, outside of Ireland, outside of America, Ireland has the greatest connection to the American Civil War. And what we're saying to people who are in America, particularly those of Irish American extraction, is, is to come over to Ireland. Um, we're, we're trying to set up this trail, we're also trying to set up this sort of guidebook book that be published that would highlight these sites and make it accessible for people to come and see where certain individuals were born, but not just that, but ports where the blockade runners would have departed from and the gunpowder mills as Damien's alluded to, cotton mills that were used by the, the Confederacy that when they couldn't produce their own cotton, they, they, the cotton was transported to Ireland. Um, and then, of course, the famous Tate's factory where I think it was the first mass production of, of, of clothing and, in fact, uniforms um, in, in Europe. And these were supplying the uniforms. And they, they supplied the British Army during the Crimean War. And then they were supplying the, the Confederate Army during the American Civil War. So these are hugely significant sites around Ireland and it's probably a good excuse for any American Civil War to come to Ireland and, and see these, these locations and, and draw the connection between this country and, and the American Civil War and probably outside of America the Irish involvement um, was probably the greatest um, in terms of the people who were, who were born that, that, that participated in the war, not just men but also women on, on as well. Well, you know, it's an interesting phenomenon for me, the Civil War Preservation Trust, which is arguably one of the most impressive, I don't even think arguably, I think it's clearly perhaps the most effective preservation organi organization in the, in the world, much less the United yeah, States. And they have a mind-boggling number of followers at their Facebook page, which I think is perhaps just a, just a rough gauge, in, off uh, back of the envelope gauge of just how immensely popular the, the, the United, this history of the American Civil War is and not only in the United States but worldwide so it seems like your work has the represents the opportunity to create a, a real cottage industry a, 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 a niche of the tourism industry which has, has really gone a begging uh, there's just so much interest in the United States in the American Civil War and I, I think Ireland's ability to tap into that will serve will serve the tourism industry very well, and I think it will also serve the cause of preservation very well. I, I see that I see them very very um, supplementary. So that well, definitely. This all totally began. I mean, we we had spoken about this before. I mean, there's, there's only one monument or memorial to the American Civil War outside of the United States of America, and that's in Scotland. And it's mainly due to the emancipation and a, a memorial to Abraham Lincoln. Um, and I remember contacting Damien many, many years ago saying, well, why is there a memorial in Ireland? Mm -hmm. and there's such a huge connection between Ireland and the American Civil War. Why don't we have something here? And as, and that, that Damien takes this point now because you have World War I, which the centenary is coming up very, very soon. But outside of World War I, Irish participation in the American Civil War is, is probably its greatest. Is that what I think? It is absolutely yeah yeah. There, there's nothing else to compare compare to it. I, I think one of the problems from an Irish context why people don't realise that there's such a huge connection and where where they see the connection with World War One. Um, I've written a bit about this. I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that the people who went to the United States were famine immigrants, so that their descendants, very few of them, come back. Came back as you would know. There was only, only actually a few dozen, probably maybe a hundred, two hundred of of these men ever returned to Ireland after the war. So, I think a lot of people they, they their their main drive and interest in in history usually comes originally from genealogy. I know that 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 was the case. You had a very interesting discussion along those lines earlier on. But these people emigrated during the famine, and all their descendants, if they survived are spread in the areas of the diaspora, like in the United States or in Australia, wh wherever. Whereas the connection with World War One, people here have embraced it um, to such an extent because they, if you like, 
can directly say that their great grandfather fought in it. Uh, it's it's that, and we have to bridge that gap in Ireland. That that uh, as I said, we we've left we've left our immigrants at the port. Our famine immigrants have been left at the port here, but we don't tie the fact that these people were number one immigrants at the famine. So the American Civil War was the second great trauma of their lives. We have to recognize that. We have to connect in Ireland the history of the famine and the history of the American Civil War as being an event that affected the same generation of people. Uh, and we have to then, if you like, ju reach out across the Atlantic so that we place the memory of these Irish people in, their, in its appropriate place for Ireland and for, for, its, own, for its own history. Absolutely. There's 40 million, 40 million Americans that are claiming Irish heritage. I mean, that is a huge pool of people to, to draw on, to say, look, um, come over, visit Ireland, have a look at where the trail is, have a look at, at the sites which are relevant to, and it's not just the, the well-known people like Marr and like Cleburne and like Sheridan, there are many, many soldiers who, who fought in American Civil War privates that um, deserve some sort of recognition, and we, we are hoping to highlight many of their birthplaces and where they're from, and that's what we're we're, we're calling out mainly to, to those in America to, to visit and, and hopefully the trail will act as some sort of roadmap for people to go around and see the sites around Ireland. Well, on that, on that, on that upbeat note, why don't uh, maybe Damien or, or Rob just share, share the uh, URL for the trail's website. What, what would be the best way for individuals within earshot to stay in touch and, and support that ongoing and vital effort? Well, I'll let you go uh, on that, Damon. I'll put up the URL, but, but, but there is a Facebook page, and um, I suppose Damien's tweets, Twitter account as well. Yeah, I mean you can you you can you can contact me through through the um, I have an Amer Irish American Civil War at gmail dot com email. Um, as well as that, we have a, a specific one for the trail, which is the American Civil War and Ireland at gmail dot com. Um, I either either or, um, and any any suggestions that people have. Um, to add to the trail, or just just generally suggestions about how how to progress um, w with developing it, we're 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 really interested to hear. Um, so well, any and, comments or thoughts people have? And I and I, I do hope you guys keep keep our members and readers posted on absolutely and as the trail progresses, and and perhaps we can rally to the charge to the sound of the bugle, just as Miles Kehoe did in the lads back in the day. Yeah, but just, just, just to give you an, an update, Ger, I mean, what we're hoping to do now is to publish some sort of book um, outlining the trail, but not just the trail, but also maps, uh, small biographies of the individuals involved, um, some photographs of the areas that we're talking about, and um, that can be purchased by anybody that wishes to travel. But even though the armchair tourist that doesn't wish to travel, it may act as a, as a nice uh, keepsake for people. We, we would continue with our, our main aim really is to have a memorial in Ireland to the Irish men and women who, who participated in the war. That, that is the key aim. That's what we started off from. Uh, and to a lesser extent then to have a number of plaques um, in, in various locations around Ireland highlighting the, the, the areas of significance. Well, uh, I, I, on that note, I think we'll just be, well, we'll cut it there. But I would say just as a as a apostrophe that the this is what I sense is a crowdsourcing effort. So any any anyone within the or an eye shot here who has an ancestor who has some experience with the American Civil War and that that is tr that is visceral and can be shared. I, I I urge you to get in touch with with Damien Robbie and and e even perhaps as simply come to the newwildgeese dot com and and share it with with our readers and members as well. So. Um, Damien, good, best of luck with that book. I, I have a feeling, based on the popularity of the war itself or the commemoration of, of the war, it's going to do quite well. Thanks and right Robbie, on. thanks for, for, for coming aboard also. And I, I hasten to say, we definitely plan on having you guys back. We're going to talk and just explore in, in much greater length this topic, and including Miles Keough's fascinating life and times. So with that, I'll bid you. Uh, in fact, you guys, your your Irish is much better than mine. Obviously, could you let's give give an Irish and a suitably Irish send off to our. Yeah. our Long laugh, I suppose. <laughs> Long laugh.
Aguilera. Uh, what you repeat? I said Slon Aguilera. Goodbye, everybody. Amen. Slon. Slon, Jerry. Oh, Slon, Slon, Slon to God. Amen.